stand right here next to me, and this way we're both here. Look, okay. So, so yeah. you go and go like this. See, the hand here, and then the hand right near the ball, and then you go to your feet. Okay. See how close you can get, figure out how close yep. you can get. Okay. okay. You know, so you have to make room, maybe you can sometimes go back. That's why okay. I told Quartz. Yeah. Yeah, it's like they put him too close, so he had to go back. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's see if you can go back to the point that you have to go move this foot backwards. Like How this? about like, like a big step back? Look, look at me. Look, look at my left foot. Ah, so okay, it's like separate. Okay. Separate. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Separate. Then from here, look. From here, you go like this. Then from here, you continue on the back over in the core. Look at this. You get close, you go like this. And then you're covering the core right away. There you go. Fall backwards, yeah. Hold. By doing it over and over, you're going to be able to judge how natural it is for you to do this. You know, in where, because you may be landing here in a different foot or a different foot here, but then that initial thing is like falling is the fastest thing there is. Okay. So you're going to become very efficient in going back, changing direction, you know, like that. There you go. Like this, right? And you 
think you're late. You move your racket, the ball goes there. Yep. You're like this, you're late. You move this, you're back. So you move this, yep. and then the ball goes cross. Okay. Right. Don't try to do with this, because this actually will send the ball in the wrong direction. Okay. pulling back does for me is it forces me to come across okay and then you start to especially on the backhand when you start to do it the body wants to move forward so what I was telling me is to bring back the left arm so pulling back combined with the left arm means I'm making contact and then I'm accelerating so it's a natural acceleration back and across It makes you look at the ball longer too. Yeah, it feels much better. Wow, let's do more. Uh, I have more balls. One, two, three. track it with this. Ah, okay. And that, then you have to go back to the hand. You're wearing the hand, then this, and the hand again. No, do one thing only. Okay. The racket is doing what it wants to do. Yeah. And you're not forcing it to do something. Okay. So let's do a little bit more. Okay. Okay. Some more ball. Uh, well, when I first put the finger on it, it felt weird. But then after a while, the racket was really controlling. Instead of me trying to control the racket, I was letting the racket do what it wanted to do. And then everything just started feeling really natural and feeling really good. the strength keeps me focused forward so I end up not taking the racket back so when I make contact everything's in front so I can just whip across the racket instead of having to worry about moving forward and then across. Actually stepping back on the shot 
so that I'm being forced to come back and then actually I'm able to recover as well. So it's coming back and across. So I'm tracking the ball closer to me so that I actually have to come pull across to get the racket to the ball, which allows me to then recover back onto the court. So I'm pulling back from the standpoint of I'm not going into the court because then I couldn't recover. So I'm actually pulling back and across, which is putting me back in position. Wow. You might think that if you're pulling back, then how do you get ready for the next move? But it actually prepares you for the next move. Because if you're moving to the right for the forehand and you hit the ball, you're going to have to go left. So do you want to hit the ball, land, and then go back? That's much slower than actually as you're hitting the ball, be coming back. So you're hitting the ball, coming back, and you're naturally then already moving back to recover. Yeah, it even helps the stroke. Yeah, exactly. And it helps yeah. the stroke because you're in front of the ball and hitting and coming across. So then you're accelerating across. It keeps me from leading or loading with the shoulder. Because you can't keep this in front of you and have this going that way. Right. So and it that, forces me to it keep, teach, it teach keep my chest that. going forward. Yeah, and they say teaching me that somebody might have mentioned point the shoulder. Right. And we don't want that. Yeah, when I was younger it was rack it back, turn your point, point everything that way and hit and point. So it's the racket can go back and forth, loosen it up, let it go, let it Move around your hand, you can help you with your power. Jump in there, with the body, everything. Jump in, beautiful. Look at the speed. Lucy, look at the speed of the ball. Bam! Blast it harder, come on. Oh, okay, yeah, because it was great. Huh? Okay. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, that's a lot of stroke, yeah? Okay. Yeah, I'll give you a little bit. Oh, no, no, I'm not saying I want less. Well, no, 20%. Okay. it felt like I was having trouble finding the ball and seeing the ball so I hit much softer because I was waiting for it and then I actually started getting used to just seeing glimpses of the ball and kind of judging it so I was forced to rely on kind of my natural hitting or my natural instincts instead of making lots of modifications all the way along the line and towards the end even though it was higher and harder to see I actually felt pretty good hitting the ball finding a decent rhythm. I took the glasses off and was just able to see the ball the entire time it felt like everything was almost in slow motion so I mean it felt like the ball was coming really slow I had lots and lots of time so it gave me the ability to relax more and try to really hit the ball properly instead of having to rush what were your best ranks so far uh, my best ranking so far is uh, last year at my year-end ranking was 10th in the nation in the men's 40 uh, 40 and over singles did you were you 45 already or not? Uh, I was 46.